Oh, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Double Portion Kingdom Ministries, an online community of believers. As most Sunday mornings, we're here on location in the Energy Corridor in Houston, Texas. We're uh, 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 we're 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 here representing Double Portion, but we're here uh, supporting a local new business in town. It's called the Flaming Fish here in. Houston, Texas, but watch this, we're an online community of believers, so the Flaming Fish, they just got here, it's a business from Buffalo, New York, so online community of believers, so whether you're in Buffalo, whether you're in Houston, whether you're in Jackson, Mississippi, whether you are in Detroit, Michigan, if, if you're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you could be in Chicago, Illinois, ah, oh, hallelujah, you could be in Tampa, Florida, but you are a member of this online community so we welcome you welcome 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 and let's get ready to go forward on this beautiful sunday morning in devotional and praise and worship That's to spend time with him, to, to revel in his word, to, to sing our praises to him, and also to pray to him and speak back to him. And so as we begin this morning, we're going to begin with the Lord's Prayer. The disciples saw Jesus' relationship with the Father, and they saw that the intimacy with the Father. And they said, they said I, please teach us how to pray like that. And he says, this is how we should pray. So let's all say this together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. As many of you know, this morning, uh, our Cuban mission team left. They, they flew out about two hours ago. They're on their way to uh, Cuba to pass out not only real water, they're passing out the, these filters that, that will filter water that will contaminate uh, homes and children, and it'll, it'll produce clean water for the next 10 years. But in giving, in, in giving that water, they'll also tell them of the water of life. They'll tell them of Jesus and, and introduce Jesus to them. So in addition to the Lord's Prayer, what I'd like for you to do, if, if you don't mind, is just where you are, ask the Lord's protection, ask the Lord's encouragement, and ask the Lord to go before them into these homes, that the ears uh, of these people may be open to the gospel and their hearts may be softened. Will you pray for just one moment? Father, I want to thank you for allowing us to be on mission with you that, you, that you invite us not only into your family, but into your purpose for this world. Father, I pray that you protect our team. Father, I just pray that you keep them healthy. I pray that you uh, hold the enemy back from against them and the evil schemes that he has uh, for them. Father, I pray that each home that they go into that they not only uh, give that living, real water, but also present the living water, that they are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, where is the power of salvation for those that will hear it. And may you open up the ears and soften the hearts of these people so they may let you in. Father, we love you. And it's in your son's name that all of God's people said, amen. Let's praise.
praises rise. Let praises rise. From the inside. From the inside. From the inside. From the inside.
not just a song. This is a prayer. And when we pray with one accord, the heavens open over us. And if our heart's desire as one body is to truly glorify him, that's when we begin to worship in spirit and in truth. We won't allow this teaching to be in vain. Father, we want you to invade our lives. We want you to invade our hearts. We want you to be glorified through the vision and the mission of Grace United as we move ourselves out of the way, as we take ourselves off of your throne and we say, be glorified. As we say, we give you the glory, we give you permission to do what you desire to do in this house so that you can be glorified. As one body, y'all, one last time and I'm going to move out of the way. Say it again, come on. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified. Yeah. All we want, God, our heart is turned towards you, God. want is for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. I love how Tiara said that this is a prayer, not just a song. This is a place of corporate prayer. We are a portion of Grace United family, and our bishop is teaching a series on worship. And my God, what a demonstration of worship on this morning. All I want is for you to be glorified. All I want is for you to be lifted high in my, I feel my heart till all they see is you, Lord. If I had a real singing voice, I would sing kind of like Miss Tierra Piggy. Yes, I would. But I just thank God for this place of worship, this place of praise, this place of prayer, this place of pressing into the presence of God. My God in heaven, welcome once again to Double Portion Kingdom Ministries, where we are an online community of believers that are here to open up the word, to delve into the word together. And so we thank you all for joining us on this morning, even for praising and worshiping with us as we open this morning um, at the Flaming Fish. It, it, it's going to tie in. Now, when I was pulling all these pieces together, I didn't see this until this morning as we were getting ready to air live that I'm seeing what God is doing, the flaming fish. It's going to make sense as we get into the message. But that was a wonderful restaurant here in the Houston area. As Pastor Don said, they just relocated from Buffalo. They're right here in the area. And it was just a blessing to see the, the online community. And I was cracking up. I said, Don, in the background of the opening, they singing Bootylicious. <laughs> he said, I don't care. Don't listen to the background music. Listen to what God is saying because we're in the world, not of the world. Come on Thursday night. If you have not listened to the Thursday night message, I encourage you to go back and listen to that message. It is one of those compound revelation messages that's going to make everything that you've heard in your life with God up until now make sense. And it's going to make this message on this morning make more sense. So if you have not watched it, I would say pause and watch it come back to this one or go ahead, finish this one and go back to that one because I promise you, and you'll hear me kind of interweave some of it in here. You know what? While I'm here in this place of prayer, in this place of praising, let's pray and, and cover the families that are dealing with the transitioning of loved ones. My family, 
We had two uncles go home to glory last weekend. My my uncle and then my great uncle. And so we're lifting up the Podier Duplichain family on this weekend. We're also praying and covering uh, Professor Robert Sims in the passing of his brother, Uncle Peasy. Um, he's still in New Orleans this weekend um, for the services that were on Saturday. And so, and we're just thanking God for peace to those of us that are left alive in the land of the living. Many of us, over the years we've been together on Double Portion, we have experienced the transitioning of loved ones. And now, even the more, you understand, when Paulette Denise prays, God, bless us while we're yet alive in the land of the living. This is what I'm saying. Let me fulfill my purpose while I am yet alive in the land of the living. I don't want to be just consuming air. I don't want to be just going to work and going to sleep and going to work and going to sleep. That's under the wrong system. Come on Thursday night. That's under the mammon system when you're working for money instead of allowing money to work for you or not even so much that money works for you when you're working for money instead of serving God. Help us, Lord, get in alignment with what it is you have for us on today. So definitely we're praying for the family. Let me tell you our topic for today. The topic for today, I'm going to tell you where I got it from. Let me let me just be 100. Um, it is, it's a takeaway from the movie, The Little Mermaid. Now, I'm not promoting the movie. Hear me. I'm not promoting the movie. When, when my children were growing up, they wanted, this was during the era of Harry Potter. When that movie first came out, they wanted to go see the movie. I wouldn't let them see the movie. And finally, God dealt with me. He said, you can't keep them from it. They're going to sneak and see it. So why don't you take them to see it and use it as a teaching moment? to show what not to do. And so that's what I did. And so that back in the day, now my daughter took my grandbabies to see the Little Mermaid and she told me, mom, I began to teach Bella and talk to the kids about how to behave. And I was like, you can go see this movie. So I went to see the movie. I'm not promoting the movie once again, but I'm the message, the topic of the message was scratched up in me when I went to see this movie. So let me, let me tell you what the topic is and you will see I'm not teaching the movie. I'm teaching the word of God. Our topic on today is don't be a rebellious believer. Repeat, do not or don't be a rebellious believer. See, believers believe the one core thing in that movie that there was the, that's being promoted is that rebellion is okay. But guess what? Rebellion is not okay. And God is telling us as believers, do not be a rebellious believer. We have four points in scripture this morning. I don't have two points right now. My four points are four scriptures. And we're going to look at what he was saying to us when he said, don't be a rebellious believer. Again, I'm not teaching the movie. I'm teaching, don't be a rebellious believer. Additionally, what God wants to do is expose the marine kingdom Mm -hmm. expose the religious system, expose the systems of this world that want to try and keep true believers away from this type of revelation. They demonize it to us, but make it acceptable culturally to the world, trying to desensitize people to what's going on in the spirit realm and to keep the true believers from understanding what's going on. So what I'm actually doing is, is exposing what we have a need to understand that we would understand how these insidious spirits are working in the earth realm right now. It's actually a multi-million dollar screw tape element. We've been talking about the screw tape element for years. The screw tape element is all intertwined in this here situation. So now the flip side, like I said, it desensitizes those believers to, to be rebellious to God, to our heavenly father. In the movie, the young lady was rebellious to her father and it caused a lot of problems. Help us, Jesus. We need to rebel against the world system, not against God. Because our first point, we're going to see it. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's why God said, don't be a rebellious believer. Because we have a lot of modern day witches that are operating in witchcraft out of, out of ignorance. In, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, let's just read the, the two verses and then we'll go back and summarize it in context. 
1 Samuel chapter 15, and this is the only scripture reference I have a slide for today. Get your Bible, get ready, because the other ones we will, you will need your Bible. You will need, well, you need it for this one too, but point blank. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 through 23. I love it the way the message Bible just speaks loud and plain in our ear. It says, then Samuel said, do you think all God wants are sacrifices, empty rituals just for show? No, that's not what he wants. He wants you to listen to him. Plain listening is the thing, not just staging a lavish religious production, not doing what God tells you is far worse than fooling around in the occult. That's witchcraft. Not doing what God is telling you to do is worse than playing in the occult. Getting self-improvement, get, getting self-important around God is far worse than making deals with your dead ancestors. That's, that's, that's necromancy. That's witchcraft as well. Because you said no to God's command, he says no to your kingship. This was what the Lord was saying to Saul. And so our point number one, Point number one is 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 and verse 23, that we will not be rebellious believers. Let me give you a quick history of what was going on here in, in 1 Samuel 15. At ver, back up at verse one through six, God had given Saul instructions to destroy all of everything, destroy everything, keep nothing for yourself, destroy everything. But then at verse seven through nine, Saul decided to deviate from the plan of God. Now, he, he did destroy everything except, except, see, we think God doesn't mind. He don't mind me having just a little bit. If he said all, all means all. Everything should be dealt with. Everything was to be wiped out. But they, they reason, they listen to a different voice. Come on, Thursday night. They listen to a different voice. You're trying to, you're trying to serve God and mammon, another system that's telling you Keep the king alive because of the alliances that he can bring and keep the best of all of his stuff. You were going after mammon. Your mind was on the money, not on God, not on being obedient to what God said. And so look, God revealed to Samuel, the man of God, what Saul had done. And so when Samuel came and confronted Saul, Saul tried to lie. It was the people. It was you. And now you're trying to blame it on the people. And so when we get down to the denouncement that takes place here, let me just read this in my notes. Samuel shows Saul the falseness of his comments. If you read it on your own, I'm not going to read it all on this morning. And in answer to his supposed justification for breaking down God's commands, namely that he took the animals to sacrifice to God. See, and that the animals, let me just give you this one nugget from Thursday night. In the Garden of Eden, there was no money. There was no trading system. There was no pay for this, pay for that. There was no sacrifices having to be done in the garden. But after the fall of man, a world system developed or emerged because of the treason that was committed. Go back to Thursday and or get the book. Um, let me let me let me put this on on this Sunday morning message. What we were saying was um, a book that I encourage you to get if you uh, is called Unmasking Mammon. I'm encouraging you to get this book. It will change and transform your entire life, your relationship with God. It will keep you from being a, a rebellious believer. It's called Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. That's O-P-I-Y-O. -O, to expose this spirit that, caught, that Saul was operating under and he thought he was serving God, but he really was serving the other. You know what? I was supposed to open. I don't have my scripture here. I was supposed to open with Matthew. Actually, we opened with that on Thursday in Matthew 6, verse 24, about the treasures and about you can't serve God and mammon. And so here is Saul trying to serve God and mammon because God said, deal with everything. But mammon said, wait, I'm going to keep this because I'm going to use this to do sacrifices unto God. You can't serve God with mammon. He said, get rid of it all. He's going to supply all your needs. That's that right there. Let me, let me see this other note. And actually, I pulled this note out of the Bible panorama about what's going on. So if you want my notes for this point right here, go on Bible Gateway Resources Commentary, the, the Bible panorama. And so what it's saying is, yes, he kept the, the, the animals for sacrifice, which was a money system. And it emphasizes that obedience to God from the heart and trust in him is far better better than external sacrifices. 
So see, like in volume two, where Paulette wrote this book titled Christians on Assignment, talking about obedience. God wants us to be obedient, not religiously sacrificial. All these pompous, like he said, the, the message Bible, I like the way the message Bible says, he don't want your, your inordinate, um, all these shows and pompous foolishness. Saul's rebellion and stubbornness counted as witchcraft and idolatry. God rejected Saul because he rejected God's word. So do not be a rebellious believer by rejecting the word of God. That's going to bring us to point number two. But before we go to point number two, let me tell you, when it, here in 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says sin is as the, the Amplified says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The Amplified, and look, I went old school. I got my paper out. That's why I said I don't have slides for all of this. I was studying and asking Holy Spirit how to do it. So right here, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Miles Monroe, I was listening to a message by him on this week. I have two nuggets I'll share with us. The first one, he said, and he was not talking about this scripture, but he said, sin is rebelling against the known will of God. Repeat. Sin is rebelling against the known will of God. So if you put that back in context with 1 Samuel 15, it says, for rebellion is as rebelling against the known will of God, which is like witchcraft, which is like stubbornness, which is like idolatry and teraphim, which is the household good luck uh, images from the, the, the world that they had brought with them. And so we need to understand that we cannot operate in rebellion. When I looked up that word sin on blueletter.org, sin is to miss the way, it's to go wrong, it's to incur guilt, it's to forfeit. And, and then it also means to purify from uncleanness. So we have to get away from that kind of stuff. And, 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 and when I looked at the Hebrew word, the Strong's H4805 for the word rebel, it's to be disobedient. It is to provoke God, it is to obey, disobey God. It is to grievously provoke him. It's to be contentious. It's to be refract refractory. It's to be rebellious against or disobedient towards. We cannot operate like this as believers. Do not be an unbelieving believer. So point number one was for us to see, according to 1 Samuel, 1523, let's go back in the slide. I, I don't have a pretty words. You write the words how you want it. Point number one, 1 Samuel 1523, don't get caught up in the sin of witchcraft. I like how the message Bible says um, we, we need to listen to him. We need to plain listening is the thing, not just staging a lavish religious production. Don't do what God tells you. Not doing what God tells you to do is far worse than fooling around in the occult. Lord, help us. So we need to do the way he said, because you rejected my word. I went back to the slide on purpose. He said, because you said no to God's command, you rejected the word of God. You rejected the will of God. God rejects you. We're not going to do that. We're going to listen to the word of God. According to second Timothy chapter three, verse 16, it's telling us that the word of God has power and the word of God has gotten such a bad flack. But I tell you what, the Bible is a portal into the spirit realm. What you need is the preceding word. The, the, the word, the written word needs to become life unto you. You need to eat the whole scroll. So here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, trying to get down to verse 16, but if you open your Bible to it, I had print it out with this paper. If you open your Bible to it in the Amplified, it says, in, the, in these last days, y'all know we're living in the last of the last days. It says, in these last days, there's going to be perilous times. People are going to be lovers of themselves. They're going to be self-centered. I saw a lot of that in that movie. I'm not teaching the movie. I'm teaching us right now. How many of us are lovers of selves and self-centered lovers of money aroused by an inordinate, greedy desire for wealth? See, this is exposing the spirit of mammon right here that it is operating in the last days. It's unmasking this spirit of mammon. And so all these treacherous things are going to be happening. Deceit is going to be in the land. It says, but you, drop down to verse 13. <clears throat> verse 13, it says, wicked men and imposters are going to go from bad to worse. They're going to be deceiving and leading astray others, and they're going to be deceived. They're going others and being deceived and led astray themselves. 
So they don't even know. Remember I said you're operating it. If you're operating with a rebellious heart, it can cause you to cause others to rebel too. Y'all all all sincerely wrong. That's why you don't go with the crowd. You go with the spirit of the living God. Verse 14, it says, but as for you, it's for you double portion kingdom ministry. As for you double portion kingdom ministry, put your name in there. But as for you, Paulette Denise, but as for you, Crystal Clement, but as for you, Mama Irma, but as for you, put your name right there. Continue to hold on to the things that you've learned and of which you are convinced, knowing from where, from whom you learned them. Know that the Holy Spirit, I'm interjecting, know that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He will lead us, guide us, instruct us, direct us, correct us into all truth. But for you, he's the one that's teaching you. And so then from it goes on in verse 15, it says, and how from your childhood, you have had a knowledge. Wait a minute. You're saying, I didn't know this from my childhood. Some of the stuff I'm just learning today, but it's from the day that you were born again. It's from the day that your eyes are opened. I'm telling you, Thursday night caused some scales to come off of our eyes so that we can see the battle that's really raging all throughout scripture. But so, okay, it says from your childhood, you've had knowledge. You've been acquainted with the sacred writing. See, from the day you were born again, you have Holy Spirit that will acquaint you with it, but you have to do your part. It's God's part and man's part. You have to study to show yourself approved. That's back over in chapter two. Let's drop down and, and let me keep reading. I'm in the middle of verse 15. I'm in the Amplified of 2 Timothy chapter three, verse 15. It says, the sacred writings, which are able to instruct you and give you the understanding for salvation. And see, for salvation, for giving you access into the kingdom now. It's not for heaven when you die. It's You have access now. I don't need it later on. I need it now. If you're going to play that, that stupid game, it's mine and I want it now. I want the access to the kingdom now. But you can only have it when you get in agreement and alignment with the will, the word, the plan, and the purposes of God. Okay, so <clears throat> salvation now, which comes through faith. In Christ Jesus. Remember, faith is not about stuff. Faith is about believing in the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. The Amplified says, through the leaning of the entire human personality on God in Christ Jesus, in absolute trust and confidence in his power, in his wisdom, and in his goodness. That's what kind of faith our faith needs to be in Jesus Christ. So we need to be learning of him. Matthew 11, 28 through 30, not in my notes, but he says, if you're burdening, you're heavy laden, come unto me, learn of me. We ought to be learning of him. So verse 16 was where I was trying to get to. And it says, every scripture is God breathed. It's given by his inspiration and it's profitable for instruction. That's what we should be doing for reproof and conviction of sin. That's what we should stop doing for correction of error and discipline in obedience. That's what we should start doing. And for training in righteousness, which righteousness is in holy living and conformity to God's will and thought, purpose and action. I like how the passion says that, that the word will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. We are not going to be rebellious believers. Excuse me. We are going to be believers who believe in God because he has empowered us with the word of God. And that brings us to point number three. I told you my points this week are just scripture. So flip over in your Bible to Hebrews chapter three. Point number three is Hebrews chapter three. Remember, the children of Israel are our example. And so in Hebrews chapter three, we see Jesus is greater than Moses, but we also see the, the, the dealings of the children of Israel again. Remember the last time I came up and I did Lord over trauma, we were in Psalm 107 that was talking about the, the wanderings of Israel, but the faithfulness of God. He's a faithful, he's faithful. We need to be faithful. We're gonna flip this title of this message by the end of the message on today, that we not be rebellious believers. We will not be rebellious believers. Thank you for that sip of water. Okay, so in Hebrews chapter three, we're going to read all of the verses of Hebrews chapter three. So if you have your Bible, let me tell you, I have mine in a parallel. There you go. You can see it when I do it like this. It's parallel, amplified and passion translation. So I'll be switching between the two. I'll tell you when I'm switching. This was just 
Welcome to my world. This was me in the conference room studying for years like this, where I would print it out, study it, and mark my notes up. So I have over there, I have um, bins full of me printing out the word and studying it um, <clears throat> to just get a better understanding. This is seeking first the kingdom. Seeking first a better understanding of what God is saying to us. If I'm a kingdom ambassador, I need to learn the constitution of the kingdom. Not church, not religion, but the constitution of the kingdom. The purpose of church is to help us understand the constitution of the kingdom. The purpose of church is for the equipping and the perfecting of the saints. So Hebrews chapter three, Jesus is greater than Moses. I'm going to start on the Passion Translation. We're going to read it all the way down. The first, let's get the first, see how far we can do it. I'm just going to read and interject. I feel the spirit of Apostle Ida coming upon me. That's what she would do. She would read and interject. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, you are now made holy, and each of you is invited to the feast of your heavenly calling. Come on, that your portion is holiness, and you are, you are invited to a feast of your heavenly calling while you're yet in the earth realm. So fasten your thoughts fully onto Jesus. What are you focused on? Your focus should be on Jesus. Fashion your, fasten, fasten your thoughts fully onto Jesus because he promised to keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So fasten your thoughts fully on him whom we embrace as our apostle, the king priest. For he was faithful. Come on. He's our example. He was faithful. You're going to see it when we change the title at the end of this message. Jesus was faithful to the father who appointed him in the same way that Moses was a model of faithfulness and what was entrusted to him. But Jesus is worthy to receive a much greater glory than Moses for one who builds a house deserves to be honored more than the house he built. Mm -hmm. Every house is built by someone, but God is the designer and the builder of all things. Uh huh. Indeed, Moses served God faithfully in all he gave him to do. Come on. Moses was faithful. Jesus was faithful. Double portion. We need to be found being faithful. Faithful believers, not rebellious believers. That's the switch in the title. We will be found being faithful believers, not rebellious believers. So his work uh, prophetically illustrates things that would later be spoken and fulfilled. But Christ is more than a servant. He was faithful as the son in charge of God's house. See, and we're to be Christ-like. We're to be more like Jesus, Apostle Levita. Yes. And now uh, we are part of his house if we continue courageously to hold firmly to our bold confidence and our victorious hope. Where is your confidence and where is your hope? So then at verse 7, it says secrets from Psalm 95. So here in, in Hebrews 3, is a secret from Psalm 95 that we're going to conclude with in a moment. So let's just keep reading. We're at verse seven. This is why the Holy Spirit says, if only you would listen to his voice this day. My God, I just saw this right now. From Thursday night when we were doing the Spirit of Mammon, we said the, the purpose of the Spirit of Mammon is to get us to listen to another voice than other than God. And so as it says in Psalm 95, the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear my voice, we must hear his voice, hear the voice of God speaking to us. Don't be, don't make him angry. I'm at verse eight. Don't make him angry by hardening your hearts like your ancestors did during the days of re their rebellion. You see why God led us to Hebrews three. He's saying, I don't want you to be a rebellious believer. I want you to be a faithful believer. The children of Israel, if they're your example, they were rebellious. But if Jesus is your example, he was faithful. Moses was found faithful, but he still had flaws. Only Jesus. <laughs> Keep going. Don't be like your ancestors did during the days of their rebellion when they were tested in the wilderness. Now, what's the role of the wilderness? It's a place of testing. It's not God's not trying to kill you. He's trying to test you. Um, there your fathers tested me and they tried my patience. This is Jesus speaking. Even though they saw my miracles for 40 years, they still doubted me. See, this is why you can't seek a miracle. Believers believe and miracle signs and wonders follow them that believe. If you're following after a miracle, you're of a rebellious heart. It causes you to doubt. Miracles are for unbelievers. You're a believer. Are you a believer? We'll talk about that at the end. Verse 10. 
This ignited my anger with that generation. And I said to them, they wander in their hearts just like they do with their feet and they refuse to learn my ways. Let me interject. Do not let verse 10 be said of you, of us. Do not wander in your heart and refuse to learn his way. That's why we had to understand his word. And, and we did series about uh, the Holy Spirit helping us, leading us, guiding us, instructing us. Learn his ways. Don't be like that. Verse 11, he says, my heart grieved over them. So I decree they're not going to enter into my rest. But wait a minute. Matthew 11, 28 through 30 tells us that we can enter into the rest of Jesus by learning of him. He said, you didn't want to learn my ways. But we need, when we learn of him is when we get rest. In one of my books, I talk about the, wait a minute, you telling me to work for rest? Yeah, renew your mind, renew your mind. Verse 12, I'm gonna read verse 12 and 13 on both the Passion and the Amplified because it gets really loud on the Amplified, but it's really in your face on the Passion. Verse 12, it says, so search your hearts every day. That's the Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Search my heart, O oh Lord, and see if there be any way in me that's not like you, that is rebellion, and lead me in your way everlasting. He says, search your hearts every day, my brothers and sisters, double portion kingdom ministries, and make sure that none of you has evil or unbelief hiding within you, for it will lead you astray, and it'll make you unresponsive to the living God. Then we want to say, where's God? But the issue is unbelief hiding in your heart. That's why you have to search it every day because Jeremiah told us that the heart is desperately wicked. Help us, Jesus. The Amplified of that same verse 12, it says, therefore be aware, brethren, brethren, take care lest there be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to cleave to, to trust in and to rely on him. It's going to lead you to turn away and desert or stand aloof from the living God. Check your heart. The heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Help us, Lord. Verse 13, this is the time to encourage each other to never be stubborn or hardened by sin's deceitfulness. I like the passion. This is what we're, this whole message is about us encouraging each other to never be stubborn or hard-hearted or hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The Amplified says, but instead we need to warn, we need to admonish, urge, and encourage one another every day. Every single day she get on my, she on me every day. If you're yet alive in the land of the living, it's an opportunity to get it right. Every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened into settled rebellion. See, don't get hardened into settled rebellion. That's what Pharaoh did. By the deceitfulness of sin, I like to amplify it, it says by the fraudulence, by the stratagem, by the trickery, which the delusive glamour of his sin may play on you. We have to, don't get caught up into that. Verse 14 on the Amplified, it says, for we have become fellows with Christ, the Messiah, and we share in all he has for us. If only we hold our first Newborn, come on, but back over in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says from your birth. So hold on to newborn confidence and original assured expectation in virtue of which we are believers from and shaken to the and unshaken to the end. So we need to be unshakable believers, confident and bold in who Jesus is and that he lives in me. I'm empowered by him with the help of the Holy Spirit to be a representation of us. Let us create man in the earth. God, get your glory. Verse 15 on the Amplified, it says, then while it's still called today, while you're yet alive in the land of the living, while it's called today, if you would hear his voice, when you hear it, don't harden your heart as in the rebellion, as in the desert. It's a repeat. When the people provoked and irritated and embittered God against them. Verse 16, we're gonna come over to the passion and close us out. The same people, who were delivered from bondage and brought out of Egypt by Moses were the ones who heard and still rebelled. Don't be a rebellious believer. You can't hear the truth, the word of God and still rebel. Help us, Lord. They grieved God for 40 years by sinning in their unbelief, but they dropped dead in the desert. Now here you are saying, it's been two years, God. It's been 10 years, God. It was 40 years. 
God is patient. We need to get some patience. Get some patience in being obedient, not being rebellious. Verse 18, so God swore an oath that they would never enter into his calming place of rest all because they disobeyed him. Now, let me tell you, I just got a word right now in front of this camera. All because they disobeyed his word, they wouldn't enter the rest. So in Genesis chapter three, the cherubim was placed at the garden to lead the way back to the tree of life. And the only way back to the tree of life is to forsake the rebellious heart, to forsake the voice of the world and listen to the voice of God. The Amplified says, those who disobeyed, who had listened to his word, though, to, but to those who disobeyed, who had not listened to his word and who had refused to be compliant or to be persuaded. We can't be like that. Listen to God. Be fully persuaded in the word of God. Verse 19, the last verse here. It is clear that they couldn't enter into their inheritance because they wrapped their hearts in unbelief. So the rebellious believer is an unbelieving believer. I'm saying that. The Amplified says, so we see that they were not able to enter into his rest because of their unwillingness to adhere to and to trust in and to rely on God. Unbelief had shut them out. Was it God or was it unbelief? And so our closing, our conclusion, let's talk about it. It's referencing Psalm 95 here. It's referencing Psalm 95. So point number four is the scripture, Psalm 95. And I have to pull it up on my phone because I want it in the Passion Translation. It's already there. <laughs> Psalm 95 is point number four. It's concluding. Don't be a rebellious believer. Excuse me. Psalm 95 is titled, It's Time to Sing. And make sure you're singing the right song, not the songs of the world, but the songs of the kingdom. Come on, everyone, let's sing for joy to the Lord, even as Grace United did and is going to close us out on today. Let's sing a song to the Lord. We're closing out with the reckless love of God. And um, let's shout our loudest praises to our God who saved us. Everyone, come meet his face with a thankful heart, not a murmuring heart. Uh-huh. Don't hold back your praises. Make him great by your shouts of joy. It don't take all that. Why they got all that music at the beginning? Because we understand what God is doing and saying. For the Lord is the greatest of all. He's King God over all other lowercase g God. In one hand, he holds the mysteries of the earth. Remember, he created the heavens and the earth. And in the other, he holds the highest mountain peaks. Uh-huh. The world systems. Uh-huh. He's the owner of every ocean and the engineer and sculptor of earth itself. He's the owner of the ocean. Hello, there's a lot going on in the news in the ocean right now. And even that movie took place in the ocean, but God is the owner. Ursula, you can be mad all you want, but God is the one that shut that down. Come kneel before this creator, God. Come and bow before the mighty. God, our majestic maker, for we are those he cares for. See, he cares for you. He's not, he doesn't want you to, when you stay stuck in rebellion, you tie his hands. You live in the Luke 15 of the matter. You are the prodigal that's gone off. The father didn't go running after him, but he was right there when he decided to come back. So if you've been a rebellious believer, you can decide to come back. Keep reading. <coughs> Excuse me. For those he cares for, and he is the God we worship. So drop everything else and listen to his voice. For this is what he's saying today when I speak, don't even think about turning a deaf ear to me like you did, like they did when they tested me in Mirabah, in Massa, the bitter place, the place of argument, uh huh, the place where they argued with me, their creator. Your ancestors challenged me over and over with their complaining. What are you doing? Are you murmuring and complaining or are you singing the praises of God? Do you have an attitude of gratitude or a stank attitude? Are you a rebellious believer or are you a believing believer? These, these are just, uh, God is just saying this. Let me finish reading this here verse and we'll be done for today. God, you get the glory. That's why, that's why the song started out saying that. God, you get the glory. <clears throat> so verse 10. So for 40 long years, I was grieved and disgusted by them. I described them as wicked wanderers 
whose hearts would not follow my ways or keep my words. Do you want that to be your description? Be a wicked wanderer. I want to be obedient unto the, the Lord, God's sovereign ruler. Verse 11, he says, so I made a vow in my anger and I declare they will not enter the resting place I planned for them. So don't you ever be hard hearted or stubborn like they were. Help us, Jesus. Don't be hard hearted or stubborn. Do you see God is repeating when he out of the mouth of two or three witnesses? We had Psalm 107 that talked about the rebellious cycles that they were in and they cried out to God and he delivered them every single time. We have Hebrews 3 that's telling us about don't be rebellious. That's a repeat of Psalm 95. Do not be a rebellious believer. Here's the switch. I'm changing the topic that we need to be a faithful believer. We need to be a faithful believer. Believe in the Lord God, sovereign ruler. Rebellion cannot be found in us. Faithfulness. We saw in Hebrews chapter three, Jesus's faithfulness, Moses's faithfulness, what was attributed to him as faithfulness, as righteousness. But we also saw the rebelliousness of the children of Israel. We need to be found being faithful believers. Let, let me go back to that slide one more time, just so we can drive that thing home, that we need to be a faithful, be a faithful believer. See, I'm changing the topic. Don't be a rebellious believer. See, we started out with that. Let me see if I can get to it. Don't be a rebellious believer. Don't be a rebellious believer. According to these four scriptures that we've looked at on this morning, we need to be a faithful believer. And so we're going to conclude with Dr. Miles Monroe. I was watching a YouTube video. You can query and look for it. It's a three hour video and it's titled Understanding the Power and the Purpose of Prayer. But at the end, Dr. Miles Monroe, when he did the, the, the prayer for people to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I had to, to go and transcribe it, type it out for myself so that I could share it with us because something's been bothering me in the traditional prayer of salvation that just wasn't, wasn't hidden. So let's look at how Miles Monroe did it. But because God has given Paulette Denise part of that same mantle to carry on in the earth realm, this is coming, I'm using the frequency of my vocal cords to bring it to our hearing from something that was left in the earth realm from Dr. Miles Monroe. So he says that we are to return back to the manufacturer by submitting to the authorized dealer who is Jesus Christ. The one in Hebrews three, submit to Jesus Christ. He's our example. Let him, uh, let him first of all, restore you back to the manufacturer. See, if you've been a rebellious believer, if you've been found murmuring and complaining and some craziness going on in your heart, let him restore you back to the manufacturer by forgiving you of your rebellion against him. Because some of us operated in rebelliousness out of ignorance because we didn't understand that rebellion is, is as the sin of witchcraft. So we're operating in realms that we didn't even know. We, that's why we unmask the mammon spirit so we can see what realm we're really operating in. Uh, Miles Monroe says it's not about religion, but it's about a relationship with the king. It's a relationship with your heavenly father. Let him restore you right now, maybe for the first time or maybe a restoration that you can put aside everything else that you've learned and just believe right now. Be a believing believer. Be a faithful believer. Are we just All you got to do is say, oh, God, give me another chance. That I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my forgiveness, as my restoration, as my reconciliation, as I come and I'm restored, reconciled back to the manufacturer because Jesus died to give me life. Yes, he did. So do you want to do that? Do you want to give him your life? Because he died to give you life. You owe it to him because he took your burdens on the cross. You need to receive him right now as your salvation, as your redeemer and be restored back to heaven so that you can do God's will on the earth. So this is my new salvation prayer. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my rebellion against you. I confess that I have rebelled and I submit to your authorized dealer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to be religious, not to be a church member or a portion of Double Portion Kingdom Ministries, but to be related again to my creator, God, 
that I may fulfill his purpose in my life while I'm yet alive in the land of the living. I receive his forgiveness right now in the name of the King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God, we thank you for this word on this morning. It's been a good sobering word and we choose to not be rebellious believers. We choose to be faithful believers. If that's you and you're saying, whoa, this is new to me. You can contact us if you have our number, text us or send us an email at paulettex 7 at gmail.com. We'd be happy to help you on this journey of relationship, growing and knowing who God is and who you are in him. Amen. A few announcements on this morning before we yield to Pastor Don and go back to Grace United to close us out with the reckless love of God. We want you to save the date, save the date. May 17th through the 19th, 2024 for the identity retreat. It's going to be powerful. I'm telling you all of the compound revelation from last year, this year, you want to be in the house. Registration will be coming in August, but we want you to go ahead and save the date to join us. This is a beautiful picture of the group that was with us on this year. We're expecting this, the, the, we're expecting more people to come. So you want to, as soon as the registration comes out, you want to jump on board and get in line with what God is saying and doing. Again, our email is pauletx7 at gmail.com. You can forward your prayer requests, um, questions, Bible questions. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel as there will be powerful videos. Sometimes when God puts it on my heart, I'm going to just begin to upload videos. If you're subscribed, you'll get the notification. Thank you, everyone who sows into Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. You can do so at Catch App, dollar sign, Paulette X7. What a wonderful day we have had and time we have had in the Lord. Let's go forward. As I said, Pastor Don has a word to close us out. And then we're going to go back to Grace United in Little Rock, Arkansas, for such a time as this. Bishop Arnold, thank you for your prayers and your covering. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of Double Portion Kingdom Ministry this morning. We pray that something was said this morning that, that brings you closer to your purpose, brings you closer to walking in your identity with Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. But most of all, Double Portion, an online community of believers, may the Lord give you peace. Shalom.
sing. I don't deserve you. Give yourself Shadow you won't light up. Come on, mountain. Snow wall you won't kick down. There's no shadow. 